Hello, everyone. Um, thanks for joining us on Facebook Live. We're uh, eager to talk about a documentary that Joseph Huerta and I have been working on for several months now. It's called Bob's Choice. Maybe some of you have seen it. Uh, maybe some of you have not, but we're going to uh, spend a few minutes talking about it and even showing you an excerpt at the very end uh, that, that, that we hope you get to see as well. Joining me is Joseph Huerta uh, on the end there, photojournalist at King 5 News, who uh, really uh, was, was you know, my collaborator on this, uh, this, this piece about uh, Bob Fuller. Also, we have Stephanie Murray from End of Life Washington, who's here to shed some light on the whole process of uh, dying with dignity. But first, we wanted to give you some background with this uh, video piece that we put together. What if you knew the number of days you had left in your life? I do know how many days left. I mean the exact number. So I only have 19 days. Not approximate. Seven days. Exact. Five more days. Let's say you knew. This is it today. It's my final day on the planet. Like Bob Fuller knew, your death date. On May 10th, this year, 2019, at 3 p.m. in the afternoon, I will die. So if you knew... How would you spend those remaining months, weeks, days, hours? I'm ready. I'm ready. In a couple hours, I'm going to be dead tired. And no, no pun there, really. I will be dead tired. I love you, Jim. Yeah. We were with Bob in his last hours. I love your cameraman, too. Joseph Huerta and I. Thank you all for being here. We were with him in his final minutes of life. None of us could have predicted what would happen next. This. I'm still here. <laughs> Bob being Bob. Even till the end, in his Capitol Hill apartment, Bob Fuller reminding us, all of us, in this room, on that day, about those precious moments. I mean, I gotta say, you're, you're looking great. You're sounding great. I, I'm very photogenic. We got to share with him. I'm ready, Mr. DeMille. Oh! There were so many. So many. No, I like to present a smiling face, and that's that's, and this I feel better like this. Yeah, but I do look fantastic, and this shirt too, especially. Right, Joseph. Right, cameraman Joseph. Where do we begin? Are you filming me? Yeah. Oh my God. Oh yeah. How about Good March third? Get me to the church on time. Our first day. I'm getting buried in the morning. We had 68 days Ding left with Bob Fuller. We're going to chime. Go pop a cocker. It's not a stopper. Just get me to the church on time. That's it, John. He was like sunshine. Oh, happy day. Sunshine on a cloudy day. If you knew Bob and you spent time with him in those last months, <coughs> you knew he was in a lot of pain. It was the tongue cancer. Damn it. <laughs> By the time he recorded this, this hurt. Bob had already made up his mind Sorry. to end his life, end his pain. Bob Fuller knew it was his right, under Washington State's Death with Dignity Law, to request lethal doses of medication. Terminally ill patients with less than six months to live have that right. It's your choice. It's, my, it's Bob's choice. Yes. Ding! Bob's choice. Stay tuned. I think it was probably on that first day when we were shooting with Bob when when I realized that you know he would start a sentence and then break into song mm -hmm. and and it struck me that uh, and I had to ask him you know um, so music seems to be a big part of your life and it and it was and you see the thread you saw that in that in that piece that we put together but in the documentary you will be hearing music throughout because music was in his DNA um, just a man full of surprises uh, on that. You know, people ask me about, you know, what was it like on that last day? And the question that they don't ask is, what was it like on the first day? That first yeah. day, I was blown away by him, how positive he was, what a, you know, sort of like sunshine, you know, sunshine on a cloudy day, right? That, that here he was having made that decision and, and, and yet so positive about it. 
your thoughts on the first day that well, you when met did him. You first meet him? What uh, date? So, well, I had known Bob for ten years, and he reached oh, out to me. Right. He reached right. out to me mm -hmm. uh, to ask me to do this this story. So that's another mm -hmm. part of the story. Mm -hmm. So we had talked, but our first day of shooting was March third, okay. uh, which and our last day was May tenth. Yeah. You met him in I February. Met him, I talked to him like mid February and met him for the first time on February twenty second, and I think actually that he had just chosen the date a few like a few days before because many times folks don't have a date in mind and it's I'm gonna see how I feel but Bob I met him on February 22nd he said May 10th is my date I'm like okay what is it about May 10th that's so that's the right date for you mm -hmm. and it was all about the party he wanted to have right. he had people coming into town people leaving town people were gonna do the flowers they were gonna do the food and it was going to be a major send-off and he was just bound and determined that May 10th was his day. You know, we're going to talk to you about, um, you know, ask you a bunch of questions. Um, some of the questions that we've been responding to on Reddit, we, we had a session, an Ask Me Anything uh, session with uh, on Reddit earlier today. I want to I want to go to Joseph and, you know, have you sort of talk about, talk about the first day, but also, you know, talk about the experience and sort of what it was like for you on this journey with Bob. Well, the first thing that stood out to me when uh, I met Bob, he is so funny. <laughs> he is just makes jokes about everything. He uh, during this whole process, he's actually making jokes about you know his his choice on this, and um, that I think really helped with our journey because it is such a hard topic, hard thing that we also have to go through, and just his sense of humor I think helped us guide us through the entire process. You know, it was interesting because I, I always, I, and I watched him, observed him with lots of people, and, I, and and it struck me that he always, you know, this is an uncomfortable situation, right, for those who learn about his decision. Uh, he, he had this way of making everyone feel comfortable mm -hmm. about it, like, like he was looking out for us, you know, mm -hmm. in this decision he made. Mm -hmm. um, did you find that? Yeah, uh, you know, every time we spent with him, you kind of forget what you're doing, like why we were there. Mm -hmm. We were just kind of like just hanging out with Bob, you know, and then right. we kind of had to be reminded of what we are doing, what's happening on May 10th. And that was kind of helping, I think, our journey again um, to cope with kind of what we were going to experience. You know, you mentioned May 10th and you mentioned it as well, Stephanie, and, and there's a part in this documentary where, uh, where we introduce you. And, um, mm. and your question to him is, okay, let's talk about May 10th. And immediately he starts to talk about the party <laughs> and you, you, saw, you say, no, 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 I'm not talking about the party. I'm talking about what you're gonna go through. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so, so talk about that moment and what someone who is in Bob's uh, situation goes through. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I only met Bob technically three times. Mm -hmm. I met, I mean, I talked to him on the phone, I met him on the 22nd, I met him again uh, in between February and, and May 10th. Um, and so my interaction uh, was very focused on uh, making sure that I supported him in the way he needed to be supported, educated him on what are the requirements, how's it's all gonna go. Um, and it's challenging because they don't, they being all of the clients I work with, they don't always hear everything. So for instance, I'm gonna jump ahead, yeah. but uh, when someone takes their meds, they are asleep in about eight minutes and it can take anywhere from four minutes to 27 hours for them to die. He had in his mind eight minutes was when I was gonna be gone. It, but in some ways, it. It, and it for, was, for him correct. it was, it but was. he for told his was. friends that, right. and see. that's what their expectation uh, was. Yep. But I just, I'm, I, I, it's, when I do this work, it's, I am just so in the moment with the person that it's the most I can ever be present, I think, with anyone, and just, what do you need? Um, how can I support you? And, and explain to everyone, in case someone's just tuning in, what it is that End of oh, Life what do do? Washington so does we, and what you do. Ten years ago, we in Washington State, we enacted this law that allows people to die with dignity. Um, and to take advantage of the law, a person has to be an adult. They have to be a Washington State resident. They need to be of sound mind. 
Uh, they need to be able to self-ingest. In Bob's case, he used a feeding tube. Mm -hmm. And they have to have a terminal diagnosis with six months or less to live. So that's how you get in the door. Then um, there are two doctors that the person needs to say. They do a first oral request. They do another oral request 15 days later. There's a written request. There's a lot of moving parts. And I just always tell folks that don't worry about all the moving parts. That's what I'm here for, mm -hmm. is to shepherd you through this process. Um, and um, I'm not sure what I was going to say on that <laughs> one. <laughs> Well, uh, w one of the th one of the things. I mean, the reason he reached out to me was he he wanted this story told. He said he wanted people to know about death with dignity. And one of the questions that was asked uh, 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 on the Reddit session that we just did, uh, I think we, I think the question was, you know, um, what what questions haven't been asked, and, and we, we, what is it that people don't know about? death with dignity, I think we responded that, that people don't even know, a lot of people don't even know that this option mm, exists mm, mm. in this state. And, and we're one of eight states, uh, and then uh, Washington, D.C. as well, that have that option. And, they, and people think it's a pill. Mm -hmm. Oh, just give me the pill. Right. Well, it isn't a pill. It's a cocktail of meds that get mixed up with, a lot of times, alcohol, because alcohol, uh, it mixes well and it absorbs well. Right. Um, and they ingest it. They drink it and they go to sleep. So, you know, that's one of the big things that they don't know how it happens, you know, the process and then how do I physically go. Right. Um, let's talk about the journey for a moment. Sure. Um, any any surprises for you? And I want to I want to ask you about, um, you know, day one. It was clear that Bob was a very special person. Uh, for me, I, I didn't realize. I, I knew that he wanted to be transparent and he was going to be selfless in, in being available to us. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't realize to what extent. I mean, he was available to us at any time, at any moment. He, you know, uh, talk about that and, and just the access that we had with Bob. You know, we, uh, we spent 68 days with Bob and he, again, he gave us the access as, as you mentioned. Um, and towards the end of our journey, I asked him, why are you letting us do this? Mm -hmm. Why are you letting us follow you? And what was really, uh, really impacted me is he said I could have spent the last three months uh, in Hawaii enjoying the sun enjoying the beach but he instead he said I wanted to spend it with you two to hmm. tell my story to share my story that's actually when I think it really hit me on what we were doing because he made us so comfortable like when we went to see Bob we were hanging out with Bob hmm. we weren't like like necessarily always talking about his choice we were just experiencing Bob and again like being with Bob you know a question has come in uh, Kirk is asking curious to know when you guys decided to have Bob tell his story rather than use my voice uh, in that clip that you you saw uh, th that that clip uh, at the beginning of this uh, actually aired on our on our newscast to promote uh, the documentary but if you've seen the documentary you, you see immediately that uh, you know, my voice isn't in it. There's no narration, and and we made that choice uh, uh, really at the very beginning because because we wanted to s kind of step out of the way and just just we wanted it to be all about Bob, uh, which is w which is why we decided that we would do this. Uh, you know, a little bit out of out of my comfort zone as a as a storyteller journalist to to do that, but I think it was it was the right choice. Absolutely. You know, one of the things I haven't said to you that I've been meaning, meaning to tell you mm -hmm. is that. What struck me through it was I knew that Bob was gone, obviously, mm -hmm. when I was watching this, but it was all told in present tense. So it wasn't a past tense, Bob did this, Bob did that. It was all as it's real world, I mean, in time. Yeah. And yeah, we knew, we knew how it was going to end, but, but on the other hand, uh, maybe not. Because, you know, there were times in the, in the 68 days, and I think it was probably, what was it, like 20 days in mm -hmm. when Bob turned to us and says, I, d I don't know whether I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to that yeah. May 10th. Mm -hmm. I don't know mm -hmm. if I'm going to make it, because he was deteriorating that, that quickly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, one of the things uh, that stuck out to me is the questions I would get about covering this is, 
what are you going to do? Are you going to be there in the room when it happens? Mm-hmm. Are you going to show it? What do you, you know, what are you going to do? And honestly, I had no idea. So on April third, when I was interviewing him, I just asked him. He said, May tenth. How would you like us to interview on May tenth? Mm-hmm. And I had him tell us how he wanted to mm-hmm. to show his. That's choice perfect. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was, um, you know, what's what's interesting about that moment, for those who have seen it, um, uh, I wasn't there for that moment when you uh, had him sitting on his bed and you asked that, that great question of how do you want us to cover it. And then, I don't know if you recall this, but, but, but after he answers the question, um, which is that he wanted you to go to the, the, the portraits of the angels and then to pan uh, to the window, and he was very contemplative about it and, and uh, deliberate about it. And then he paused and then he, and then he turns to Joseph and he says, how does that sound? And then Joseph says, how does that sound to you? Mm-hmm. Which, a, a couple times that yeah, happened. Yeah, a couple times the- that happened. I think I, I, asked, I responded to a question he asked later in the documentary mm-hmm. with that question, how does it sound to you? Um, and he said, what did he say? He said, it sounds nice. Sounds nice. Yeah. Um, he, he, he would be the first to tell you that he liked to du- direct. Uh, mm-hmm. He liked to, he was, he, he was planning the party on mm-hmm. May 10th. Mm-hmm. And, and um, what, what we wanted to do was honor his wishes, mm-hmm. which, is, which is what we did ultimately at the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so I have a question that came in and it was uh, f- uh, from Dana who wants to know, what is the death with dignity process uh, for people with epilepsy, uh, I mean, uh, I, I, I'm not sure where she's going with that, but yeah, so I mean, as long that. as yeah. I mean, a doctor is going to determine competency, mm-hmm. um, and so as long as someone, like I said, they have to be a terminally ill with less than six months to live, it doesn't matter the disease, whether it's epilepsy or cancer or ALS or whatever, um, they can't have dementia. Uh, That goes against the being of sound mind. Um, So as long as they meet the requirements and the doctor writes a prescription for them, they're eligible to take advantage of the law. One of the questions we got on uh, the Reddit AMA was uh, age. Oh, age. Well, they have to be an adult. So they have to be 18 or older. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we've had young people. We've had 95, you know, there's (laughs) no no reason why you can't take advantage of if you need to. So this was, I didn't know this until, we viewed the, the documentary which uh, premiered 10 days ago now together, because we were there uh, prepared to answer questions on King, King 5's YouTube channel. Uh, and I didn't realize uh, that mm. this was your the 13th uh, time for you to help navigate uh, the end of life. And and then, I mean, here here we are in September, this happened May 10th, as we all know, uh, and that was the last, the last one for you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and you have another one Come coming. On. Oh, Sunday, yeah. Sunday, mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. So tell us about, tell us about the experience for you and 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 what you go through on on that day and leading up to to those days. What is it like? Well, I'm, I, to be honest, I. I don't get as close to the person as right. you folks did. Right. Right. And part of that is there's a line that I'm there kind of on a professional way, although I'm a volunteer, um, and I'm there to support them and to shepherd them through the process. Um, so some people are very sure about when they want to do it. They don't need a lot of help along the way. Some people do need help along the way. Um, and so the day of, um, what happens is someone takes um, a couple of anti-nausea meds uh, about an hour before they take their life-ending meds. Um, we mix the meds up, like I said, with alcohol. In, in Bob's case, ironically, he was, a, uh, he was an AA, so he hadn't had a drink in years. 35 years, thir- as a matter yes. of fact. He was sober 35 years. And yeah. so it was you know, very ironic that here he was going to go out with, a, with an alcoholic drink. Um, and so they ingest the meds, um, they go to sleep and don't wake up. Um, and 
I stay for a couple of hours because that's about the average time that someone uh, takes to pass and, and then I make sure that and there's also usually another end of life Washington person there mm -hmm. with me just two heads are better than one and um, and we don't leave unless there's someone there who feels comfortable staying like with Bob I think it was four and a half hours before he passed mm -hmm. um, and then um, it's um, I call it a an emotional hangover for me um, I'm not usually um, distraught but I'm it's a, it's a little heaviness and an honoring of the person and so I go home um, and that evening I have a little drink of whatever the med whatever the alcohol they had so that night I went home and had a little toast to Bob with Kahlua I actually it, did the same thing yeah yeah, yeah. And, and we were talking about that earlier and you did this you did the same thing yeah, yeah it's hard to get Bob out of my system um, I have to say, um, I'm getting a little choked up, but, mm. but you know, because, because, you know, so we were with him for 68 days, but then, uh, but then we, it took us a couple of months to put this together. So, you know, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, let me, let, let me stop there. But, but it's true what you said uh, earlier that, that we got close to him. You know, the more we spend time, the closer we got, and, and uh, yeah, yeah, very difficult, very mm -hmm. difficult mm -hmm. for us. And I, you know, it's interesting watching the, the documentary. I've watched it a few times in the last week, and for me, it, it kind of feels, it feels like he's still around. Yeah. And with death, yes, the, the person is physically gone, but they live on. And I think that's a lot of what Bob wanted. He wanted his story told. He wanted people to know about this option. He really, he was a larger than life guy who had yeah. big things he wanted to accomplish. And this was kind of his, his, sh his passing gift to us. You know, and he, he want, you know, I mean, he knew uh, he had critics, and we we include that in the documentary. And and you know he he maintained you know this isn't for everybody. We had a section that was actually we called it this isn't for everybody. Uh, he knew that, but but and the reason we called it Bob's choice is because this is this was the best decision he thought mm -hmm. for him. Mm -hmm. So we called it Bob's choice, and then we you know that this was really a piece about one man's decision. Mm -hmm to make that choice, which he had every right to do because he lived in Washington mm -hmm. State. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but he, you know, he, he, he said, I know this isn't everybody's cup of tea, I think is, is mm -hmm. the quote, mm -hmm. uh, but it was for him. And, and people, this is the number one question that people ask me. I don't know about you, Joseph, but, but people want to know, like, did he waver, like, throughout the 68 days? I mean, were there times where, where maybe he had doubts? And the honest answer uh, is no, he, never. And didn't we ask him that question every time we saw him? Yeah, uh, every time, every time we saw Bob. Yeah, like it's. Uh, I felt like it was our responsibility to ask that question. Yeah, every single time. And um, the the last day, I was crying um, as I was shooting it because it's such an emotional time, and uh, I tried asking him. And he already knew what I was going to ask, and he answered it for me. Mm -hmm. So without mm -hmm. even me needing to ask. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. And the question you were asking is, are you, are you... Are you sure it's time to go? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, he, mm -hmm. and he responded, and it's in the documentary. He goes, yeah, it's time. I mean, by, by the end, he even said to us when we were standing, and remember when he gave us a hug, is that, you know, he had pneumonia, and, you know, he said, it's time. It's, it's, it's so interesting because, like, every time we saw him and asked him that question... I asked him. I asked him one time. I said, "Look, all this, all this love you're feeling from all the people in your life. I mean, do you now, with twenty, I think it was twenty-six days to go, or something like that, do you wish like today, maybe you had, you know, a few weeks more so that you could enjoy this, you know, a few weeks longer?" And he paused and he said, "No, this is perfect." Mm -hmm. He said, "This is perfect." And then, and then he yeah, thought and he goes. If anything, maybe five, five fewer days. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, so this, so this is this is a man who knew knew what he wanted, mm -hmm. uh, and then and then was 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 able to to get there. Yeah. And you know, I find with other clients the same sort of thing that once they've made that choice that they're going to do it, I've never I've never seen them say, eh, I think I've changed my mind. 
Now, with that said, you'll notice in the documentary at the very end when I'm well, yes, usually I'm, I'm, I'm handing yes. in ca his case the syringes. Mm -hmm. I'm handing them to you. You know, uh, you know that what's going to happen when I when you take this, you're going to go to sleep. You're not going to wake up. You know that you don't have to do this. I mean, th that no one is coercing you to do yeah. this. Are you sure that this is what you want to do? Yes, he was. He was all in. Yeah, he said. He said, "I'm sure." And then I think he even made a reference to the to the pneumonia. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, the other thing that that struck me was, I I think it's safe to say that he died a happy man. He had people who loved him, with him, uh, and singing to him, singing to him who got to say the things they needed to say to him, he got to listen to, to those things and be able to respond. Um, and in that sense, it was, it was beautiful. Mm, mm. Well, it just gives the ability for everyone to say and do what they need to have closure. Yeah, yeah. Any final thoughts in the, uh, on this? Um, j Bob was just a special person and um, this was 100% his choice. To, yeah, to go. and I am so honored, so so feel so blessed that he reached out to me and said, "John, um, I'm doing this, and I want you to tell the story." Uh, and very thankful that that um, you know, a King uh, said, "Yes, go with it." And, and and here's a question that people, you know. Uh, that people don't know is that this was never intended to be a documentary. It was going to be one news story, five or six minutes long. But Joseph and I, after the first day, we said, no, 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 no. This, <laughs> this yeah. really needs to be a documentary. So that was the next pitch was to say, you know, remember the the news story that we w we wanted to do about Bob Fuller. Uh, we think it could it could make a very compelling documentary, and and we got a green light on that, and we were very thankful that we were able to do it. Thank you for just you know being here and talking about talking about Bob Fuller. Um, I want to end this uh, Facebook Live session with maybe an excerpt uh, from the documentary. It's actually the first seven minutes of Bob's choice. Take a look. We'll meet again. Don't know where. Don't know when. But I know we'll meet again some sunny day. Keep smiling through just like you always do till the blue skies drive the dark clouds far away. You're looking great. You're sounding great. I, I'm very photogenic. I like to present a smiling face. And that's... that's and this, I feel better like this, yeah, but I do look fantastic. And this shirt too, especially. Right, Joseph? Right, cameraman Joseph? You're feeling the love, aren't you? I am, as a, I'm surrounded by love. You'll see as you walk with me here these next two, two and a half months that I'm surrounded by love. Thank you. Yeah. So that's the lilac tree here, and I love the smell of lilacs. So what's going to happen here? Maybe they'll just sprinkle it, but I'm, I want my ashes to be part of this tree. And I'm right up there. That's my apartment right up there. My next apartment's going to be way up there. Way up there. Look, we can see. <laughs> I'm being cute. Today is Sunday. March 3rd. My name is Robert Kenneth Fuller. I go by Bob, although currently I'm Uncle Bob. I was born July 4th, 1943. 8, 10 a.m. wartime in Manchester, New Hampshire. I have lived 75 years, a rich, full life. On May 10th, 
this year, 2019, at 3 p.m. in the afternoon, I will die. Before I got the diagnosis, 188, 190. And look how skinny I am. When I first got his email, um, the, um, and he was telling me the decision he had made, I just said, that's Bob. But I respected the decision. I really did. There comes a, a time when you know your work is done. What is the cancer? It's squamous cell carcinoma of the tongue and the oropharynx. So, and I also have one in this node here on the left side of my neck. But what it's going to do, it started under the tongue, but then it hasn't metastasized other areas, but it started under the tongue. But I saw it on the follow-up CAT scan. It started growing this direction across. So eventually, it'll impact my swallowing first, but I'm okay because I have a feeding tube, so I'll still be able to hydrate myself. But as it goes on, the next step will be it'll start to choke me, suffocate me. I've lost all my fat. There's like nothing there. Bob is in a lot of pain. Huh? I wanted him to maybe fight a little more, but it's there's no more fight. Um, and he's uh, he, he's in a lot of pain. Uh, uh, pain is inevitable with cancer, but suffering is optional. You don't have to do it, and I, I choose not to. <laughs> God damn it! Talked to Bob about you know he's had a good journey, you know, and he's made a decision to do this now. Uh, before things get really challenging and difficult and before things get painful. It's not for everybody. You know, the whole idea is to be able to make a choice. Uh, whether it's a choice to engage in all heroic measures, absolutely. If that's what somebody chooses to do, then they need to be able to do that. Conversely, if, if somebody realizes, you know what, I'm done. You know, it's not uh, worth it from my quality of life to be able to to, to continue receiving the kinds of medical treatments that are needed when I can make a decision now, when I'm able to, to end life on my terms. And with dignity, that's why it's called the Death of Dignity Act. Hi, it's Bob. It's uh, Friday night, the 8th of March, about nine o'clock. I'm just worn out, tired, a lot of pain in my throat. So I've taken meds some morphine and other things, and I'm just gonna go to sleep. Just wanted to say goodnight, bye. What a great thing it is that we live in 2019 and that people have the opportunity to make those choices for themselves. That they don't have to die in a hospital alone um, at a time that's not of their choosing after having lingered through months or years of pain um, but that they have the opportunity to, to make the decision that they're going to leave this world with some of their dignity still intact. So how would you like us to cover you on May 10th? On May 10th, I'd like you to be here filming the entire thing here in my bedroom as I'm giving my, uh, my medication, my formula, my, my bowl. And just as I'm about to have my last supper, my last meal, I'd like the cameras to pan from me to some angels that I have posted my pictures of angels around me and then maybe move the camera out the window here. Nobody needs to see me stop breathing really. They need to know that I, that I went, that I died. How's that sound? How's it sound to you? It sounds nice.